this is Nancy with On Point TV and Quilting with Nancy. Thank you very much for joining us. And if you're not joining us live, thank you very much for watching us on YouTube at your convenience. That was very nice of you. So this is part two of Free Motion Quilting, the Mr. T, the Sea Turtle. So again, if you go back to the first part of it, I'll explain to you that it's from fourth and sixth designs. They've got some instructions on how to do this. I'm not sure they're in business anymore, but in the process, before they left, I don't know, I guess before they stopped being in business, they made this really cool quilt that my friend Marty played, made. So we, last time we did the borders, I did some feathers, I did some comb designs, I did some pebble designs. No, I didn't do the pebble designs, I did just the border designs and the outline. So this time we're going to concentrate on the designs needed to finish him. So if you'd like to take, Athena's going to pull in here, take a good look at him. So these are the designs that we did last time. These kind of back and forth, kind of comey kind of things going back and forth. Um, here is the pebbles. We're going to talk about those today. If you go down a little bit farther, this is the feathers that we did. So where we're going to start today is up here on Mr. T himself. So here you can see that I've already quilted him, but up here we have not quilted him yet. And you can see that it's very puffy because I did already quilt the water and we will quilt the water today. So this will be step one and then I'll take you through some of the other ones with some drawings. I don't think I need to draw this particular part of Mr. T or the quilting that I'm going to do because it's really going to be very self-explanatory as I'm doing it. So I'm going to spin this around because the quilt is coming out very, very flat at this point, and I'm just absolutely loving it, and I know that Marty is going to love it. So I went through the tools last time. This time I'm going to start with the Robinson Anton rayon thread, and in my bobbin I'm going to put bottom line thread. So the bottom line thread is the very, very fine weight polyester thread that comes from Superior Threads. The cones like this you can purchase at Fireside Quilts. She's got quite a few different colors. So you can pick up a cone and then have, you know, enough to do a whole lot because there's an awful lot of the cone. I'm also going to use my Sort Quick. The Sort Quick is what I put on my hands now. Um, comes, it's kind of like a little egg. And it's really nice because you just go like this. So it's getting onto your hands. Going to make it so that your hands are going to kind of not stick to. That sounded silly. But it's going to make it easier for you to move the quilt around. All right. So we're going to come into position here. Athena's coming on over. So we're going to work on this section. And you can see that the section is really kind of fluffy. Here, let me change that light a little bit. There, that's a little bit better. You can see that it's still pretty puffy. I've quilted down the water on both sides and I've quilted down this part of Mr. T. But here, I'm gonna show you what I did with these, I don't know, these aren't pebbles. Well, I'm gonna quilt pebbles, but these are not pebbles on Mr. T. These are his spots. Mr. T has spots, there you go. So, my, I do not have to bring my thread up because I did use my thread cutter, so I know now that I have just that little thread in the bobbin. And the idea is I'm going to just go around these little spots on Mr. T. So I'm going to try to, like here, I'm trying to stay off of the blue. When I come over here, I'm going to add a pebble in between. Although now I feel bad for saying that Mr. T has pebbles. He doesn't have pebbles. He has spots. Then I'm going to jump over to this little guy trying not to jump onto the little spots um, just because honestly they don't need to be any more secured. The applique technique that the fourth six gals came up with is really securing down those spots so I don't need to worry about whether or not the applique is going to hold. I really truly believe their technique would definitely hold it in place. So now I'm going to come back around here and I'm going to fill in these spots because I don't want the background, this creamy background that's on him, to be standing up puffy while his spots are. I want the background to really be sat down a little bit more. But you can kind of see what I do. So I will continue this whole step. I'm going to stop it here and cut my thread. So let me jump over here. But I want to show you on here on his body. So you can see here, let me see if our light will change at all. I don't think it will. There it is, that helped a little bit. So there are these bigger spots. With the little spots, I did not 
quilt on top of them. That's not too big of a spot that when the quilt gets washed, because you know that sooner or later it will get washed. If it's on your wall for 10 years, at some point you got to wash that baby, right? I do anyway, so I assume that everybody else does. But these larger guys, that would have been way too much for me to leave unquilted. So I went through and made large pebbles all throughout his larger section. And I do have this one more section. I'm not gonna do it right now because I need to put a darker thread in, but this will be one more section. So I'll probably go around, maybe do, I don't know, maybe three or four spots, making them come larger or smaller. And then I know that I will have Mr. T himself done. So now we're gonna move on to some other designs. So let's move you back a little bit. All right, because now I need to draw. I'm telling Athena, move back a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, she wasn't paying attention, you guys. All right, totally back so that I can draw. Back, 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 back. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, so these are the designs that we are going to quilt this time on a couple of the different parts of the... Oh, no. The, the, Not again. The, the plants that grow in the sea that start with an A. So... Um, the stippling or the meandering one, I'm not going to do that one. I already did it. And I think that you've seen meandering enough. You don't need me to quilt that again for you. This is the design that I put in the border, but I did also use it in some of the um, plant spots. There's some purple ones that I use that really bright Magnifico from Superior. This happens to be one of my all-time favorite designs. This swirl with points, I will put on anything, any time of the day. It is my favorite one because it's fun. It's nothing is, I don't know, there's just nothing boring about it. I love that I can do swirls, I can stop with a point, and when you stop at that point, that means that's the time you can turn up the volume on your TV if you're watching Star Trek or something. I love that I can't get stuck in a corner. So for instance, here, I would wanna make sure something got quilted, so that means I can just go in and bop into that corner and come on out and add another swirl. So this is one of the designs that we're gonna do. I could literally sit and draw this all day too. I probably doodle a little more than I should, but I enjoy it and I highly recommend it for everybody. The next one is the pebbles. So pebbles are pretty easy to do. You know what, I did do pebbles last time, didn't I? I thought you actually did. Yeah, we did, we did pebbles last time. So we are not gonna do, cause I remember saying go around three times or four times, whatever floats your boat. All right, so the last one we're gonna do then is this little design and I'll show you the fabric that this is on. And the fabric is kind of, got like little hashing marks kind of like this on it. So the idea is I'm just going to quilt in and around the hashing marks, which gives it a really nice texture. And then the last thing we're going to quilt is the water. And the water is very, very cool. And some people will say that it also looks like flames, but it works really well with this particular quilt because obviously Mr. T is in the sea and with the fabric. The water fabric was an island batik fabric that they specifically made for the fifth and sixth um, design so that it would work with the Mr. T quilt. And you'll see how I'll just kind of follow the lines going back and forth like this in the quilting, filling them up. All right, so now we're going to go to quilting. Let's get this out of the way. I need to change my thread first. This way. And we're gonna put in one of the greens. We're gonna put in this really bright. This is a Floriani polyester, really shiny thread. Now somebody commented last time about the thread and I had said that the Floriani is an embroidery thread. Floriani is an embroidery company. Com yeah, embroidery company. And she said that she had heard from somebody that's an embroiderer that you're not, that you shouldn't use embroidery threads for quilting. Not true. Not so. I'm not sure how the person got misinformed and I gotta tell you my friend Donna is a master embroiderer and that would crack her up if she knew I was calling her a master embroiderer and she's the one that got these threads for me and she knew I wasn't going to use them for embroidery. She knew I was going to use these for free motion quilting and there's no problem using these threads. The thing you need to remember is that you want to, if you're using a poly on top, 
you need to use a poly in the bobbin. That's why I use the bottom line in the bottom. If I chose to use a cotton thread because I wanted a matte finish, which honestly isn't very often, I like shiny things, but if I did, that I could use cotton on the top and then I'd use a cotton in the bobbin. It's okay. I also use the bottom line in the bottom when I'm doing the rayon, as you just saw, and if I'm doing invisible thread, I'll use bottom line in the bobbin. All right. So we're going to come on to this design, and this is the kind of square design that I mentioned. You also, I hope, can see how puffy it is. It's just really puffy because I've literally got everything around it quilted. Oh, this is the purple design I was talking about, so I did put some of the feathers into the um, plants. Also, I so wish I knew how to say that word. All right, so drop in my dogs, and we're ready to begin. So coming here, I'm going to be going up and down so i need to get this thread out of the way i'll cut it off later so kind of following the pattern in the fabric back and forth back and forth so now when i come up i'll go up and down but i'm not intentionally trying to make them look like perfect squares these are plants i don't think they would actually be square the fabric has squares in it so i'm going to follow that but to counter the fact that squares are squares and maybe not what it would be in a sea plant, I'm making the squares not be too perfect going in and out. So they're kind of covering the spot and it really works well on this fabric. I hope that you can see that that puffiness is now going away. As I get the quilting done, it goes away which is one of the reasons that I love free motion quilting so much. If you tried to do a puffy quilt like this with your walking foot in straight lines, it would be nigh on to impossible to get the puffiness to go away. So with free motion quilting, because it kind of bounces over the top of it, look at how flat that is now. It's just as flat as the rest of it, but yet it does have texture. All right, so now I'm gonna cut this thread off. And we are gonna go around to the other side of the quilt. I've only got a few spots left and then I get to hand this off to Miss Marty. All right, let's roll that up. We're going to work on these two spots. No, we're not, we're gonna, this one here is the one that I will later on do circles. I'll do pebbles in this, but I already discussed that I remember now that I did pebbles. So now I'm gonna do the swirls with points. Again, this has already been quilted down. That was my, um, my stabilizing lines. The water has already been quilted down, so this is just puffy. That's all there is to it. So we're gonna start here, and I'm gonna work with those swirls with points. Swirls and points. So with the points, that means that you can travel wherever you need to be to get your next stitch. So like this, there's my swirl, but I'm gonna come all the way down there and create a point so that I can do the stitching right along the edge of that applique. Then I'm gonna come all the way over here and make some more swirls. Now, one thing you do want to do is to change up your swirls. Don't make them always go in the same direction. It looks just a little bit too planned if you do it that way. So I love that I can come over here. I just, from here all the way over here, I just bopped and bopped, and then I'm to the other side again. So I can go back and forth that way. So I can never be stuck in a corner, which is kind of the greatest fear when you're free motion quilting. I get myself stuck in a corner. I hear that a lot from students. With the swirls with points, you can't get stuck in a corner. So I'll show you that again. I'm gonna do one last swirl over here and I wanna get back to the top because it's easier to quilt toward me than away. So I'm just gonna bop into a dent, bop into a dent and bop over here. Now I'm back to the top again. So now I can continue swirls with points. So try swirls with points, not just on an art quilt maybe like this, Try it in a bigger format. So I do like to do it in like a, maybe a two to three inch swirl, and then I'll leave about a half inch or so between the lines. Love doing an entire quilt like that. My friend Karen, when she uses her long arm, that's one of the all over designs that she uses. It's just so much more interesting than just a meandered or an edge to edge design. 
All right, and then that is again going to be all totally flat. So we've got the water to do. So we got to back up a little bit because I got to change my thread. Because the water is blue, we need to use blue. And I did use, I've already used a couple of shades of the blue. I've used some of the, the dark. I've got a dark one and a light one. I think the dark one is a little bit more visible for the viewer, so I'm going to switch to the um, that one now. Athena's raising her hand. Yes, Athena, do you have a question? I actually do. Okay, what's your question? Would you advise doing that design on just busy fabric or not? Oh, that design looks so cool if you have a really not busy fabric. Okay. So if you've got something, because then you can really, really see it. And designs, I mean, when you get really comfortable with your quilting, this is a great project to try all your quilting designs on. Because like Athena mentioned, these fabrics are really, really busy. So you're not really able to point out every time I took a breath and it went jiggly or jaggly. I hope it didn't do it that often. But if you try doing your free motion quilting on solid fabrics, good luck. It's not easy. You are going to see every mistake, not mistake, every bobble that you make. Now, there are some people that are fabulous with that. They can just do a wonderful job, especially like the, um, the computerized long arm machines, or if you've got an embroidery machine that's doing the quilting, because it will be perfect, because you're not counting on somebody to move it. So when it comes to doing solid fabrics, especially when you're looking at modern quilts, Hmm, I wonder why they do any, so many straight lines on those quilts. Hmm, I guess just ponder it for a little bit and see if you can figure out why. All right, which also is why I always use a busy backing. I don't use anything solid on the back or anything plain. I want a busy backing so that you can't see every little bobble that I maybe have made. Not that it's a mistake, I'm just saying it could happen. All right, so we're gonna come to the water. So the water, as you see here, is super puffy. There's actually even a pleat right here because the little arm of Mr. T has been quilted and the plants behind him have been quilted. That means there was just a whole bunch of puff left. You also can see this cool batik design by Island Batiks. It had the water in it, which, honestly lends itself to this quilt so beautifully. So I I'm, I know that I'd read on an old post that the fifth and sixth girls had made about how excited they were that they were gonna make that fabric for them. Athena, you're gonna have to not lean on the quilt. Okay, all right, trying to get this so that I can get this moving. We are gonna do some back and forth designs. The thing you want to be careful of with back and forth designs is that you don't move too fast. So I'm gonna, whoops, we gotta move back a little bit. Okay, there. All right, I also, whoops, Athena says you guys can't see. All right, there we go. I also am not going to go in a straight line. My lines are intentionally going to be wobbly because this is water. So as I'm going, those little, um, like the pleats here, I'm gonna try and get this pleat to open up a little bit. I see that I grabbed it already. There, I'll get that to open up. I'm gonna get my hand in here so I can keep it opened up. I'm gonna go back and forth. When I come back this time, I'm gonna try and keep that pleat open so it won't there. This time it didn't bring it down. So the hardest part about doing a design like this, this kind of back and forth motion, is there is a tendency for you to go faster going one way than the other, whichever is easiest for you, which kind of makes sense that you would go a little bit faster going in one direction. So that means that you just have to be more conscious of it. You're in charge. So don't go any different speeds. I am going a pretty consistent speed back and forth. I am following the lines, but I'm not trying to be on the line. And now I'm going to be going into a bigger space. And I'm going to go a little bit faster. I'm keeping my tempo in terms of my hands very consistent. When there is a large space in the um, color of the design, that's when I'm adding that kind of back and forth. So like right here, the space between those two colors is kind of wide. So that's when I'm going to fill it in 
with just a little bit more of these water motions. It's gonna come all the way back. I think it's usually when I go back that I have to be most conscious not to go too fast. I'm gonna come in here. So I'm really filling in these little spaces between the, um, the sea plants and between Mr. T. When I was doing the larger bits, I got to get really, I got, to, I got some long lines going. It was kind of fun. Uh-oh, Athena just got bumped by the cat. All right, gonna go back and forth. And we're just gonna fill in this little guy here and then we will pretty much be done. I'll have some more water to quilt, but that'll be it. Okay. And now look at how flat all of that is. Super fabulous. Marty is gonna be so excited. So there you go. Mr. T, those are the designs that I'm gonna do on Mr. T. I've obviously got some more water I've gotta get in here. I've got a little bit more on the on plants that I need to do, but then Mr. P T will be done and Marty will be able to put the um, binding on it because she didn't tell me I was supposed to do that. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, as always, my email is quiltingwithnancy at gmail.com. Please take a look at our website, which is onpoint-tv. That's where you can find any of my books and my patterns. And if you're interested in any of the threads and things like that that I use, then go to firesidequilts.com. Um, Laura's done a really great job picking up all of my favorite tools. So if when I did that My Favorite Things series, she literally went and picked up all of those so that those were available. She does have the bottom line on the cone and the sort quick there too. And I think we're done. Mr. T is done. I'm not sure what I'll be showing you next. I don't have any plans, but I'll think of something fun to quilt for you as I'm working on some bigger projects that are coming down the pike. That's all we have. Have a great day.